Let us begin. Hello everyone and welcome to BHC Studio. Today we'll be reviewing my first impressions of, let's just move this over here. Here we go. The brand new Fujifilm XF150 to 600mm f5.6 to f8 RLM OIS WR. So let's start the video now. Right, I don't know exactly how to, uh, I had to, I had to use this part of my studio. I did this part for the unboxing as well because this lens is so big, I can't use Studio A or Studio B, so I'm using Studio C here. And this is the lens right here on a Peak Design uh, carbon fiber tripod. I don't shoot this focal length very often, but when I do get a chance to do it, it's very refreshing. Uh, you get used to the power of the telephoto. So I got used to 600 quite easily. And when I had the uh, the 100 to 400 millimeter lens, which this is a Honkin lens as well, so right here I have the 1.4 times teleconverter added onto it to give it uh, as close to 600, I think it works out to like 560 mil with the 1.4 f8. So you're still getting a little bit more uh, uh, telephoto with this lens over here with this new 150 to 600. But I just thought for comparison, uh, you can see. So let's kind of go from like right here is the mount here, and this lens here, of course, telescope. So here we have uh, 150 plus 1.4 times or whatever that works out to. But nobody cares about that. Everyone wants to know about the pull power, right? So right there is, uh, I think it's uh, 560, and you can see it's still a little bit longer here, but if you take off the teleconverter, let's just look at it for, as a as a 100 to 400, you're still, you, you're kind of, you're, you're seeing the size difference right here. And so I think this is the lens that most people, um, if you're thinking about this lens, you probably maybe already have this one or thinking of upgrading from the the other I think the 70 to 300 and there's even like what is it a 50 to 200 lens and so uh, this guy here I think this is Fujifilm's first entrance into the the, the super super telephoto so uh, 600 millimeter in APS-C works out to about a 900 millimeter in full frame and then once you put the 1.4 or the two times teleconverter with the two times teleconverter you're getting a 1200 millimeter so again if you convert that that's like 1800 millimeter in full frame equivalent so you're getting quite a bit of pull power um, I'm used to shooting at 28 mil equivalent right 18 millimeter in APS-C and so having 150 as the widest insane and then 600 and by 600 f8 uh, even with image stabilization there's ois in here i think five stops and then the body this is the xt4 this has i think 6.5 stops of stabilization and both of them using both of them being used in conjunction you're still kind of getting a little bit of a i'll maybe put some video inserts but you can sort of see that you know you could see your image it's just kind of shifting and floating but uh, I don't know how many people use this for video I did try it I did lots of birding because I think that's kind of what people use these lenses for nature wildlife you can use it for sports as well I didn't have an opportunity to try that um, that'd be fun to do and Fujifilm did tell me that this is a pre-production copy and so I can't really give you like my final thoughts on autofocus speed tracking and those sort of things and so you you have to wait a little bit more before I get a production copy, but uh, in terms of like focusing speed and accuracy, I think it comes down more to the body because this is kind of a electronic connection and the phase detect autofocus. Because uh, I want to jump between the XT4 and the XH2S, I definitely saw uh, an improvement, especially on tracking, because the XH2S does have the subject tracking, so um, it can track birds and and other mammals and cars and planes and stuff like that. So when you have the bird tracking, it actually does track the bird. And so uh, autofocus was more accurate and it was really quick. And because of the uh, the linear motor design is very silent, right? And so also there's a, a new processor on the X-H2. And so it, it was everything was a little bit zippier on this. But of course, the X-T4 will eventually get upgraded to the X-T5. We'll have the same firmware and the same algorithm. It'd be nice to see if Fujifilm will add that sort of uh, the subject tracking to the X-T4. My guess it is not because a lot of that probably has to do with the processing power and that won't come until the X-T5. And so, um, yeah, I went to, I, I own a beach regional park. 
and had a chance to shoot uh, birds and planes and people and just having that 600 millimeter uh, I did some there's some kids like way far off and I zoomed in to 600 and I was really far off like they probably couldn't tell I was photographing them and they were a decent size so I can only imagine if I had the two times teleconverter with me at the time and how close I can get as well as just sort of tracking planes uh, with this lens here and as well as getting really close to birds so uh, bird Photography is not that easy because I think their sight is better than your hearing. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but it seems like as soon as I kind of like quietly went up to the birds and as soon as I aimed the lens at them, they kind of knew. So it was really hard to, to find these birds. And so maybe a two times teleconverter helps in that it creates that distance between you and your subject and they move very quickly. And so I had a uh, good time uh, trying to photograph birds as well as taking some video of birds. And I as well did some sort of landscape kind of stuff, followed the boat uh, moving across the ocean and, and also did video of, the, of those kids. And I even did a, a selfie video of myself. And I think I was at like maybe, I can't remember, but the camera was so far away from me that I tried to do kind of a, a self-portrait at at least 400 millimeter. I couldn't do it because the iPhone, uh, using the remote app, trying to do a Wi-Fi triggering, it, it wouldn't trigger from that distance and I couldn't run far enough to get into the photo and so I would probably need like a more a, a radio powered uh, trigger or a really, a really long sort of a manual shutter release. But I think at 250, and I took a couple of portraits of myself using the app, um, you know, you can see the compression, even at I think 250 or 350, whatever I was at, it was nowhere near 400 or even 600 because I just, like I said, the Wi-Fi wouldn't work that far, but it was kind of fun doing that. And as well, I uh, did some shots of boats where I, I basically showed you what it looked like from, uh, 18 to 120, so like kind of like you know that focal length very well. And then I did the the 100 to 400 at 400, and then punched it at 600, and then showed you what it would look like when you put a two times teleconverter. And so I'll kind of insert the photos here. I also have an article up at Fuji Love, so you can do a more critical look at what I actually shot. But um, yeah, I mean, what I noticed was bright daylight. F8, and when you put the two times teleconverter, you're at F16, you definitely need the image stabilization, but if your subject is moving, stabilization only stabilizes you, it doesn't stabilize your subject, and so you still have to crank up the ISOs to get your shots, so ISO 1600, ISO 3200 during the day, because you're at F16, the two times teleconverter, or even at F8, you're still up at like ISO 400 or ISO 800, and if you're used to shooting birds and used to shooting boats or whatever, and using super telephotos, I'm sure you're used to that. And at 600 F8, Bocalicious, you're still, you know, I shot birds at, at 600 F8, and you can see it's just, the background just melts away. It's just a beautiful bokeh at 600, even at F8, because again, full frame equivalent, that is a 900 millimeter. So F8, you're probably still getting like, you know, just maybe even under a foot of depth of field, of, sh of shallow depth of field, if your subject is reasonably close to you. So uh, I did that as well as a sunset, and that's kind of where I struggled. It was beautiful photographing the sunset, but again, at F8 or at, uh, with the 1.4 times uh, teleconverter, you know, you're starting to crank up the ISOs, the ISO 3200, and uh, maybe a little bit blurry even with IBIS, but I did some video work as well, and just beautiful, just beautiful colors coming out of this lens at sunset. And uh, I love the compression. I did one shot of sort of like cityscape. You see the rolling hills, you see downtown Vancouver, and just kind of how it compresses everything. So if you are even into architectural, urban kind of photography, you could probably do some really cool compression shots. It's just walking around with this lens in the middle of the city. It just looks like a bazooka. And I did mention this in my unboxing video as well as uh, people may wonder, well, you know, why are these lenses white? Well, a lot of these lenses use uh, Optical lenses like the the LD or the ED type, uh, the extra low dispersion or low dispersion glass, it is sensitive to heat. And so if you are outdoors and it's bright and sunny and it hits the lens and the lens is black like this, 
Uh, you can get some fluctuations. Now, uh, back in the old film days, you could see sports photographers would actually put blankets and cover their lenses if they were outdoors and if it was hot. Uh, because they didn't want their lenses to expand, it actually kind of distorts the images. Maybe the, the construction now is newer, so maybe this white paint isn't necessary, but it is nice that it is white. It does reflect light, and it will keep the lens as cool as possible if you are outdoors. And so in case you're wondering why these lenses are white, I don't think there's going to be a problem with uh, this black lens here but uh, if you are considering upgrading from this to this uh, I think well I mean the proofs in the pudding I I'll post pictures of what 400 millimeter looks like and what 600 millimeter looks like and then when you get the teleconverters you know if you have this and you have the 1.4 and right here is the two times tele converter uh, if you add this to this you are getting uh, you're getting 800 millimeters APS-C and if you're adding this to this lens you're getting 1200 millimeters so you're magnifying even more uh, the difference between these two lenses when you start adding teleconverters and so uh, if you're into burning if you're into uh, wildlife photography if you're doing uh, some sports I did do some handheld stills with this again just watch your ISOs making sure that if you use the reciprocal rule if you're shooting at 600 you should be you know at least over one five hundredth of a second even with the help of IBIS as well as OIS in this lens here so I'm just looking at my notes over here. Um, you can look up all the specs online between this lens and the 100 to 400. But the thing for me is that this lens is coming in, at least we're, we're told, I'll change, I'll correct down below if the price changed, but I was told 2000 US for the 150 to 600. And it's 1899 currently at BNH for the 100 to 400. And so there's a $100 difference between these two lenses here. But if you add 1.4 times teleconverter, you get close to 600 with the 100 to 400, but that the 1.4 times teleconverter. So let's just add the 1.4 times teleconverter. So you add this teleconverter here from Fujifilm, and it's a $450 teleconverter. So now you're adding. So it's like what? What is that? 2350 for this combination. Because if you're trying to get that pull, you're getting one trying to get close to 600. So with the 1.4 tele, times teleconverter, I think you're getting like 560 f8. And this is 600 f8. So if you're just looking at just straight out numbers, this makes more sense. And so if you have this lens, you have the 1.4 times teleconverter and the two times teleconverter, it would make sense to sell this lens and then just upgrade to this one. This mount is awesome. Very easy to go from vertical, uh, from portrait to landscape mode right here. And this does come off quite easily here. So it detaches and then you can just attach this lens directly onto your tripod or if you're just handheld shooting then you just take this off here but locks in screw this on tight and then arca swiss type connection so it just connects directly on to your tripods and so uh hopefully i'll be able to borrow this lens again from fujifilm thank you so much fujifilm for sending this out for me to review again the images that i posted and the videos that i posted uh, i'm not really supposed to pixel peep and talk about that because this is a pre-production unit but so far so good if you have any questions let me know down below and i'll try to answer them and uh, check out my other videos as well, check out my unboxing on the X-H2S and the new 18-120. to Fantastic combination. I just love shooting with this. As well, uh, hopefully I'll have my first shooting impressions of this kit as well. But having both of these, having the 18-120 the to and then being able to go from 150 to 600, a lot of fun. Had a lot of fun. So thank you again for watching. We'll talk to you soon. And happy shooting. Peace.